Hello and welcome to another quick little uh, lecture or an R demonstration. And this this time it's going to be for the binomial test. Recall that the binomial test can be used, or at least in the way that we're going to be using it, can be used to test or to learn about the population proportion for a single population. And so here we go. There, these are the steps, and these are the same steps as written there as it has been for the previous examples. We need to know what the parametric test is, its assumptions. We need to test the violate, uh, data violate the assumptions, and then we got to use the correct test based on that uh, violation. Um, here, the parametric test is the binomial test. It assumes the data are binomially distributed. Do the data violate the assumptions? And that, that's the question of how do we test that assumption? For this course, we're not going to test that assumption. We're going to assume that the data are binomially distributed. Um, if you'd like to figure out, if you'd like to discover what those tests are, you'll have to stick around for stat methods too. And so the parametric test is the binomial test. So what's the correct test if the assumption is violated? Again, you'll have to stick around for STAT2 to find out. Um, for this class, if the data fit the one population proportion, it's going to be the binomial test. So here's the situation. It's, it looks very familiar. Um, school zones have reduced speed limits, even when children are not present, and still water that speed is 30 miles per hour. So here's the research question. Is the proportion of cars breaking the law greater than 10%. I'm sorry, but I've got to change this. Portion of cars breaking the law greater than 10%. Um, so thinking about this, here's the, purport, here's the hypothesis, or the hypotheses. The research hypotheses, the hypothesis is that pi is greater than 10%. Pi is used because it's a proportion, p for pi, p for proportion, and it's population proportion. So we're using a Greek letter because it deals with the population. So the research hypothesis is that pi is greater than 10%. Because there's no equals part, that means that's also the alternative hypothesis. Since pi greater than 10% is the alternative, the null is going to be the opposite of that. Opposite of greater than is less than or equal to. So here's the test. The parametric test is going to be the binomial test. It's assumption that the data are binomially distributed. There are no assumption tests for this course. Therefore, it can't fail the assumption test. So really, all we have to do is perform the binomial test when it's one population proportion. This data should look familiar. It's been used quite frequently, and we'll be using it again in the future. Um, these are the speed limits for cars that I uh, got for using a radar gun pointing out the cars, giving them heart attacks. Well, not the cars' heart attacks, the drivers of the cars' heart attacks. Not literally, of course. So what we need to do, and, and remember, um, the hypothesis, with the way that we're defining pi, is the proportion of cars that break the law. So a, quote, success is a car traveling faster than 30 miles per hour. So. All we need to do is two things. One, count for each of these zones, but we're going to just pay attention to zone A right now. So count how many of those numbers are greater than 30, and that'll be the number of successes. And two, we need n, the number of trials. And the number of trials is easy. It's just going to be 40. Um, but using Excel to figure out how many of these are greater than 30 is going to be kind of tough. Let's see. That's one, two. 3, 4, OK, I'm bored now. Fast way to sort in Excel. I'm just going to highlight all the numbers I want to sort. Select Sort and Filter, smallest to largest. A notification is going to pop up. That's what the ding is. It says, hey, look, there's data next to your selection. Do you want to expand it? I do not. I want to just continue with the current selection and sort. And now, to figure out how many of these violated the law, just highlight all of those that did. Look down here. Count is 31. So there are 31 successes, and by success I mean violating the law, out of 40 trials. 31 successes, 40 trials. Let's head over to R. The function is binom tests. We give it three pieces of information. One is the number of successes. x equals 31. 
2 is the number of trials, n equals 40. And 3 is our hypothesized proportion. We hypothesize that p was equal to 0.1. And not only that, we hypothesize the alternative hypothesis was greater. To remind you of this, let's go ahead and pop up the slide again. And there it is. 10% greater. 10% greater. We run that, and there we go. Again, it spits back the number of successes so that we can make sure that we put the numbers in correct. It says number of successes is 31. The way we've defined successes, that's absolutely correct. Number of trials is 40. Number I clocked 40 cars. P-value is very small. Because the p-value is small, less than alpha, we reject the null hypothesis, conclude that the alternative hypothesis reflects reality. In other words, the true probability of success is greater than 10%. So in words of this experiment that we're running, the true proportion of cars violating the law is greater than 10%. Here we have a one-tailed confidence interval. Remember, we like two-tailed confidence intervals. So the only difference is we're just going to get rid of everything right there, run that. And we can say that we're 95% confident that the true proportion of cars violating the law, I guess cars don't violate the law, the drivers violate the law. So the true proportion of drivers violating the law in school zone A is between 61.5% and 89.2%, with our point estimate being 77.5%. Let's do the same thing with school zone B. Just because uh, we got one example of school zone A, so I'm going to comment on that. Let's go ahead and do the same thing with school zone B. So here's our data. We're going to sort school zone B. Highlight the numbers, sort, smallest to largest, get the really loud warning, continue with the current selection, sort. At school zone B, there were 38 people violating the law. Well, that's, since we're doing essentially the same analysis, I'm just going to copy and paste, call this B change the 31 to 38 in both cases in both cases A and B we looked at 40 cars in both cases we hypothesize the same proportion of of law breakers way off on that hypothesize that was greater than 10 percent so this first line is going to be a test for the null hypothesis that pi is less than or equal to 10 percent Again, number of success is 38, number of trials 40, p-value much less than alpha, reject the null hypothesis, conclude that the proportion of law-breaking drivers is greater than 10%. This second will give us the symmetric confidence interval. We're 95% confident that the true proportion of drivers in school zone B that violate the law is between 83.1% and 99.4% with our point estimate being 95%. And we can do that for school zone B, uh, C and D as well. We'll go ahead and sort C. Continue with the current selection. Highlight and count all those who are going faster than 30. Count is 33 of them. School zone C, uh, X is 33 now, p-value is less than alpha, so we reject the null hypothesis, conclude the proportion of lawbreakers is greater than 10%. We have a 95% confidence interval for school zone C of being between 67.2% and 92.7%, with a point estimate of 
82.5%. And you know what? While we're here, might as well do school zone D. Can sort. Hmm. I'm not seeing anybody not violating the law. That makes this a little bit easier to calculate. So school zone D. X is 40. Boom. P-value less than alpha. Reject the null hypothesis. Conclude that the true proportion of drivers that violate the law here is greater than 10%. Run the second line. We're 95% confident that the true proportion is somewhere between 91.1%, I'm sorry, 91.2%, and 100%. Hmm. So we rejected the null hypothesis in all four places. P-value is much closer, I mean, the proportion of violating drivers is much closer to 95% than it is to 1%. I hope this was helpful. Actually, you know what we, sh we can do now? Is pool all four school zone datas and do it for all school zones in Stillwater. So instead of school zone D or A or B, we'll do all school zones. Okay, so we need to know the number of successes. That's just going to be 31 plus 38 plus 33 plus 40. That comes out to be 142. Sample size is 40 plus 40 plus 40 plus 40, which I can do that in my head. Let's go ahead and do the hypothesis test. Control R. I'm not really surprised. P less than alpha. Same uh, consequence. We're, we're going to conclude that the true proportion of people violating the of drivers violating the speed limit law in front of school zones is greater than 10%. And we're going to get a 95% confidence interval of somewhere between 82.8 and 93.2% of all drivers violating the law, uh, with a point estimate of 88.75%. And that's really all there is to this. It's a binom test, one sample proportion test, essentially. You have to tell the number of successes, the number of failures, the hypothesized proportion. Don't forget to specify the alternative hypothesis if there is one. And so, that leads us to the end. Hopefully this was helpful. Take care.